What's up, YouTube? Let's Talk Scooters Live, back again. I'm here to help you guys with the problems you're having with your scoot and kind of update you on what's going on over here. This time I got my lovely wife helping with questions. She'll read them to me. Um, so some of the things that, uh, that are new over here yesterday picked up this guy or it wasn't yesterday was it two days ago yeah. i got a really good deal on this stretch ruckus um i'm i'm not a huge fan of the 10 inch wheel i like the 12 inch wheel probably change that but this is more going to be like a fix and flip type scooter but i've uh it's still got the stock shock on it i'm going to put this fancy guy on here pretty sweet and i got a new youtube video coming out right here real quick um starter clutch i burned the starter clutch out uh, testing the fuel injection system starting and stopping starting and stopping a million times another thing that we got coming is uh i actually have half of it filmed already but uh two stroke 2t all the way from the bottom end up build we'll put that on youtube new crankshaft uh crank seals everything i've got this all cleaned up ready to go that's for the genuine buddy, uh, but that will work for all kinds of other type scoots. Okay, we have fish sticks. Question. All right, what's the question? Uh, he put a 120 millimeter main jet open, no filter, and it's DY6, but the air filter screw is out for turns. Do you think that'll be okay? If the, the air screw is out for turns, that's kind of the limit. Um, I would go up one more size on the on the main jet and uh let me see if i have what i would recommend you can do like half sizes if you do check this out and flip this around so i've got these that i got i went to a hobby store like actually this is for a furnace but you can find these at uh hobby stores these are tiny little drill bits and if you don't have the jet the, the jet drills or the the jets you can use jet drills and you can also go to like a, a fastenal and get like all the different sizes of drill bits to drill them out if you want. Because uh, a lot of times that's that's the issue with um, jetting is like you you don't have the the jet the proper jets to do it. So if that's the case, then you can do that. That's a little hack. And if you go too big, you can always solder it shut, put a little solder in there, heat it up with a torch, and uh, drill it out again. That's like my. Uh, Actually, that's the way I do almost all of them um, because it's more precise anyway. Uh, that's what I'd recommend. Hopefully that answered that. But four turns is kind of the limit. It should be more like two to three turns. Tia's telling me I need to sit down. I want to show you something. This is the plug and play. This is off the subject, but I just wanted to mention this. Not ready yet. Rolling wrench, EFI, plug and play kit for the stock ruckus. Oh yeah. Getting close. I just need to do a bunch of testing. And then projects coming up here is uh, we're gonna stretch that guy. I got a Mojo Mountain here and kickstand. I, did, I got all that stuff before I got this. So we'll see what happens. All right, what else we got? We did, did fish stick right back. Yeah, um, we'll put a 125 jet in tomorrow. Yeah, that's what I would recommend. I would also recommend a, a filter on that, an air filter, of course. Um, and there's two different types of filters. Let me show you what I'm talking about. There's the foam type like this. These are the foam type filters. Those are the ones that I would recommend. Over, let me see if I have this other filter. Oh yeah, the, this filter. I wouldn't recommend these filters. You get more flow on the foam filter. Hopefully that helps. What, is, uh, what are all you guys riding? What kind of scooters do you guys have? I'm interested in knowing. There's Admin Tia. Say hi, Tia. 
She's the admin. Somebody's writing a Tau Tel Zoomer or Zummer. Zuma 50F 2017. The Tau Tau, the Zoomer? Get, do it a 52 millimeter big bore kit on that. That'll really wake it up. That's what I recommend. And the 150cc Tau Tau. And then the, I'd seen that you, the Zuma 50F. I have, I'm doing right now as I speak in my garage, not this garage, the one at home, a C3 70cc big bore kit with a ported head, transmission kit, and a pod air filter. You'll see that coming out on YouTube. I actually have that kit on our website. It comes with the fuel injection tuner and everything. I've done a couple of those. They're, they're pretty sweet. And it really brings it back to brings it to life because I know those Zuma 50 Fs they only go a top speed of 38, but they're great scooters. Is that the one we did the big bore on a few years ago? The Zuma? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've done maybe like six of those big bore kits on the 50 F. Melosi makes a nice kit for that 50 F as well. But that um, those uh, any of those uh, Tau Tau um. 50 CDCs, they all have the same engine, that QMB 139. The, you can really bring that to, to life. You can, uh, if you do that 52 millimeter big bore kit with the big valve head, your scooter will literally, literally do like a wheelie. Do you see the comments in there too? So he goes uh, with his Zuma 50F, 40, over 40 just stop. Yeah, that sounds about right. At 40 though, at rev limits, it stops. Do, 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 just bounces off the rev limiter. I think ours is 38. Around here, 40 downhill maybe. Um, somebody has a Honda Met Rough. Change the bars and the controllers. Can I still use the stock brake handles? If you change the, the, what was it? Change the bars and the controls? Uh, the bars and controls, can I still use, yeah, the stock brake handles? Uh, not, no, not really. Um, because, let me explain why. I'm sure you, you know what I'm talking about here. So if you pulled the, the stock controls off like this, then that means that you see this lever is attached to your control. So there's really no way to do that. A lot of people will do like stock controls and then cut the lever off and then do aftermarket levers. So I don't think you can, I don't think you're going to be able to use the stock controls with aftermarket or the stock levers with aftermarket controls for that reason. Okay. And then somebody's getting ready for, the first startup on a GY6, the oil they were given was mineral based. How long should I run this oil for break in, and what oil should I switch over to after the break in? Um, so the uh, the break in oil, just do that for like a hundred miles, no more than a hundred miles. And then for the uh, the motor oil, you can use 10W40, uh, or you can use 2050. You can even use automotive oil. This is the oil that we use. This uh, iRide oil, it's pretty good. And then, this is actually something new that we have. We, we have on our, we actually, we don't have this on our website yet, do we? No. Uh -uh. These are pre-measured 125 cc gear oil bottles, no. which, which makes it really uh, easy to do the oil change. But yeah, to answer your question, don't run that oil more than 100 miles and then upgrade. I wouldn't use a synthetic oil. I would just use a bulk oil on that. Um, and... Uh, Change it every 500 miles. Okay. Um, what kind of carb or what size carburetor would you recommend with the 52 millimeter big four kit for the Zuma? So that, um, is it carbureted? Yours should be fuel injected. Uh, if you don't know. Oh, are you talking about the Zuma? No, Zoomer, the Tau Tau. Oh, the Zoomer. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so the, uh, yeah, see our situation is a lot different. So the question was, uh, what carburetor to use with a 52 millimeter big bore kit? Well, up here we use a stock carburetor, which is 19 millimeters. And uh, if I went, I've, I've tried doing a 150 cc carburetor on it because it fits perfectly. That does not work. I've tried it and tried it, but we're remember we're a mile above sea level. He's from Connecticut. Yeah, that's I think that's sea level. I've had customers though run a 150 cc carburetor on the 52 mm, 52 millimeter kit, and it works great. They say. But that doesn't work way up here because we have way less air, about 20% less power up here, less air. Okay. Um, if 
somebody wants to keep their Zuma, a 50cc, if I add an exhaust and filter, will it run too lean without the aftermarket ECF? Um, say that one more time. I want this to is keep, for the Zuma? Yeah, now we're going to Zuma. The Zuma 50F. Uh-huh. If I add an exhaust and filter, okay. will it run too lean without an aftermarket ECF? Oh, yeah. ECU? Yeah, so if you run an aftermarket filter, you could run the exhaust without um without the uh without any tuning uh it probably should use some tuning but it will will work once you do that pod filter it might run but it's not going to run like it's not even worth you doing any of those upgrades for if uh, you're not going to do a tuner but we i do have a tuner for that um i had one custom built for that machine they sell them uh other people sell them but mine's specifically designed for that big bore kit but my tuner would work for that and I think the price on it is like $215 for the tuner. So uh, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, so the exhaust will work, not the intake and exhaust. But one thing you should know is uh, whenever you do intake, and it, or if you do an exhaust, you always want to do an intake too. It's kind of like running a marathon when you just have an exhaust. So every time you breathe in, you put your hand over your mouth. When you breathe out, you pull your hand over your mouth. It's kind of, it's kind of like half the puzzle. So make sure you do them together. Um, that's what I'd recommend it. Of course, you're going to have to do a tuner. It's, it's kind of like an expensive upgrade because yours is fuel injected, but it also makes it a heck of a lot easier to tune. And I've got this, uh, exhaust. I'm going to pull off of here. I've got to get this, uh, this thing is like totally jacked big time. It's, it looks like it's been rubbing on the ground because if you use a stock shock on this, uh, on a on a stretch like that, you're, the suspension's so weak. So you guys that are doing a stretch, don't even think about running a stock shock with a stretch. I know this was probably temporary for the guy that owned it, but uh, yeah, you need to do something beefy like a, a shock like this. I'm gonna, I might put that fuel injection system on this guy. We'll see what happens. And then I've got this. Let me know when a question comes in, T. Hey, I'm just jabbering. I'm, I'm waiting for you guys to ask questions. I'm filling up the time here. So if you have a question, let me know. Um, I just did a new oil pump on here. This under behind this nut was leaking. This is on an Eton Beamer. So if you have an oil leak, it's super common for that to happen. It just leaks oil all over the ground. So did that. What else? Tia Spree. Mm -hmm. All right, how can we help guys? What do you need help with? Do you have any performance questions? Uh, you have any problems that you're having? Anything like that? Um, here we go. Is it worth spending the extra money to put a fuel injection on the stock Tao Tao 150 Chinese scooter? It's a 2017 model. Um, the question is, is it worth uh, putting a fuel injection on the stock Tao Tao motor? That's totally up to you. Um, the fuel injection system is about 500 bucks. I don't know what you paid for it, um, but you know what? It's up to you. It's totally up to you. Um, the short answer is probably, uh, unless it's like customized and and you really love the thing, do it. Or if you're having problems with like, uh, um, you know, s tuning things like that, then do it. But um, if it's everything's fine and you're enjoying it the way it is, I probably wouldn't do it. Um, somebody has a GY6 150cc buggy. What's the largest diameter exhaust tube you would suggest? They're going to put a big bore kit in it later, but building the exhaust now. He thinks one and one eighth is too big, possibly? That's a good question. That is a good question. Um, the only way I'm going to be able to answer that is if I hop online. Um, so what was the big bore kit? It's Again? a 
he has a GY6 150cc. What's the largest diameter exhaust tube you suggest? For just the 150. Yeah, he's going to put a big bore kit in it later, but building the exhaust now. He thinks one and one eighth might be too big. Um, the question is, how big is the port? If you, you can port match it, um, how big is the exhaust port? I see, I don't know what that size is off the top of my head. That's why I'm struggling with this question. Um, but it is good to have some back pressure on it. I mean, if you're going to do that, that larger pipe, then you made, you would do a silencer on it for sure. Um, shorter, short answer is, uh, the big, the bigger, the bigger is better. Smaller is good too, though, but then you're going to have to match it with it when you do that big bore kit. If you do too big, though, um, whenever you, uh, if you're with your stock setup, it's not going to run, you're not going to get the power that you need out of it. So right. I'm kind of bouncing everywhere on that question. I, okay. I'm not that great at that question. Sorry. Okay. Um, the next question is, is a plastic engine shroud absolutely necessary? Um, is the plastic cooling shroud necessary? That Let me show you everybody what he's talking about. Um, a lot of the GY6 guys will run these. This is the cooling shroud here. There's a fan normally here and it, and it pumps air through and into the, onto the fins. The, the short answer is yes, it is necessary because it's going to get too hot. Although I will tell you with like some of the 50 cc's and 150s I've the customers I've gone out to they've had their bike like that for like two years without the cooling shrouds on it and everything was fine. So as a professional I tell you definitely keep those cooling fins or shrouds on because it's going to get too hot. Um, but I will say that I've seen them last without it. Okay and then back to DJ Beard with the uh Big four. He plans on maybe doing an 180 cc. He's gonna port and polish the head and run a super trap muffler, so you can tune the back pressure right now. Perfect. Right. And then. Perfect. Yeah, the super trap muffler. I don't. Do they do they make those for the, the GY6 engines? But I know what you're talking about. The super trap. You can add in like the back pressure plates, which is cool. I see. I, those uh, remind me of like the the V Max, the Yamaha V Max. Seems like they all have that pipe. And then uh, we have a spark plug that turns black fairly quick. What could cause that? Okay. So if you have a spark plug that that turns black fairly quick, that's going to be. Uh, let me grab a spark plug so I can kind of walk you through this. Um, that's a rich condition. It means you're getting way too much fuel. So you have two options when that when when that's the case. Um, and where you should be looking at is right here on the end when we're tuning we're looking right at the top of this um the, basically the 90 degree there right at the top um there's two things you can do you need to go smaller on your jet your main jet probably your main jet or you can open up your air filter box more so you need more air or less fuel one of the two so you can get like a pod style air filter like i showed you guys before which was this one and that'll help uh, bring in more air, which will lower, you know, it'll balance out the fuel better. Or you need to go smaller on your uh, main jet. It might even be your pilot. But uh, that's, that's the question would be what led up to that problem. Sounds like, you know, I, I will mention this. So I've seen people buy like a, a pod filter like this on eBay. This is a big one, but, and put it on their carburetor. And all of a sudden it's way too rich, meaning that's there's less airflow than your stock air box on this. So you got to watch with what, what you buy on these uh, filters. Okay. Next one is let me catch up here. Um, which performance exhaust would you recommend for the Zuma 50 F four stroke? Performance exhaust. There's not a whole lot um, in the U S that's uh so they have the uh what is it the what is that pipe oh, what is that pipe what is that pipe everybody runs this is a um oh two brothers the two brothers uh pipe that's the one that you always see in like the u.s but what i would recommend you do is hop on web bike japan just google it and type in uh your model the zuma 50f 
They have way more pipes than we do. Check that out. You'll have to order from Japan and the shipping's gonna be a little bit more. But if you wanna be different than everybody else, then that's what I'd recommend. But that Two Brothers is the only one I really have experience with. Um, that's the one everybody goes for. The, the My C3, I'm gonna try getting something from like Webbike. Um, something crazy exotic, I don't know what. Different than everybody else has. Uh, and just kind of test it and see. So yeah, check out that Two Brother pipe and then check out Webbike Japan. Okay, and then we've got um, a fuel cuts out at high RPM after the header wrap and intake. Is boost worth the extra power? Header wrap and intake? Yeah. It cuts out at high RPM? Yeah. Okay. It's been everywhere looking for help trying to stay stock for, but heavy mods will boost help my starvation issue at high RPM. So what is that bike? I'm not sure what it is. I don't remember if he it's from Ghetto. What is he Can you tell he me? It's a GY6150. Oh, GY6150. You you got a header pipe and you wrapped it, a heat wrap, and you did an intake and it and it bogs out at high RPM. So the question would be, did you increase the jet size? Did you go up in jets when you did that pod filter? Um, what he's referring to is he. Uh, he just got a, a different header pipe, so a different exhaust, right? And then he wrapped it heat with heat wrap, and he installed something like this. I don't know if it's exactly like this, but an intake, and uh, it's bogging. So anytime you're getting more air in, so you're getting more air in and more air out, so it's you definitely need to go up on your jetting. So uh, that's what I would recommend uh, up on the jets. And there's there's also another area of the carburetor you can adjust and it's the uh, the needle you can raise the needle up too but start with i wouldn't mess with any of the pilot jets right now just uh only with uh only do the main jets i'm saying gy6150 tomos nitro just the fuel pump go back to that quick did i see did i see him put did, are you running nos is that what i got there ghetto dexter are you running nitrous oxide uh, is that what I'm reading? Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll wait till he responds here. What's the next question? We'll come right back to him. Because um, he also says, I have a drag bike with NOS and fuel pump exhaust and intake. Sudden loss of power at RPMs. So oh, okay. So you, had, you have a GY6 with nitrous oxide. Uh, uh, what was the other stuff? Uh, it's a drag bike with NOS, fuel pump exhaust and intake sudden loss of power at high rpms um so the the question the question would be why is it cut out with the nitrous and all that um the only way that you're really going to know if it's a fuel issue or not if it was mine this is what i would do i would recommend that you get on you may already have one of these but you need a hot uh, a wide band o2 sensor look up um dobeck performance safer tool saf are you could rent it it's like 20 bucks a week i think and then you could uh, dr you'll what you do is you drill a tiny little hole and it comes with a plug and that goes into your exhaust and it sniffs the exhaust so it can tell you exactly what your air fuel ratio is that's what i would recommend so that once you when it's cutting out can you see if it's the air fuel ratio is that bad could, what do you need to do that's where i would start i mean you could also check the spark too and you this might be kind of hard uh, but you can, you know, rev it up really high, you know, with the wheel off the ground and see if the spark is continuing, see if it's a fuel or a spark problem. It's got, it sounds like a fuel problem to me though. It's getting way too lean when you hit that nitrous because that nitrous burns really hot. Okay. Uh, is there consequences to having a big exhaust on any engine? Yeah. Uh, just depends how big the exhaust is. Like here's a scenario that I ran into personally. So like we, uh, Tia had a, a stretch ruckus with the stock carburetor, and we went with uh, actually this exhaust. Let me show you. This exhaust right here. So this, this comes in two different sizes. The other size is this big. So see how it's a lot smaller? I don't, I don't know the exact dimensions, but when I installed that sucker, we went from going 40 miles an hour to like 20 miles an hour. There is such thing as going too big on your exhaust. You don't want to do that. Um, so, because you want to match the exhaust 
with the carburetor. So in order to make that work right, I had to go with a 20 millimeter carburetor. Uh, the 13 millimeter carburetor wasn't working. So depending on how big your exhaust is, um, then, I mean, if you have the stock 50 CC or the stock 125, stick with what they recommend, you know, like whatever pipe you're getting, get the smaller one, unless you're going with a big bore head or a, a bigger pipe, or I mean, sorry, a, a bigger uh, intake carburetor, that's what I would recommend. Um, so there is some, uh, there is some risks if you go too big, you'll have to match it with a bigger carburetor. Okay, there's another question, I can't find it, but I remember it, but what's the best way to pep up a bone stock ruckus 2004 i believe the best way to pep up a bone stock ruckus there's a couple different uh things that we do we even have that let's see i don't know if we have I, it's in this box i believe but um look up our plug and play uh cdi coil combo that'll raise the rev limiter the other thing you can do is these you've probably seen these all over the internet and see why um this is an NCY CDI box. It, it raises the, uh, the RPM uh, or the rev limiter. Here's the other one. This is the one that we offer. This is better than they, we offer both of them, the NCY, um, but both of them get rid of the rev limiter uh, or not, doesn't get rid of it. It get, makes it, sets it really high. Um, you will increase your top speed um, about five miles an hour and you'll notice a little bit of an increase uh, on acceleration. But on this guy, this is it has the, co the ignition coil and the CDI box in one. We have these plug and play. And there are about, was it 215 bucks, these guys? Yeah. And then the uh, NCY box is, I think, 114 bucks or something like that. But uh, there's a simple little thing you can do. Um, do five gram Dr. Pulley sliders. If you're completely stock, they look like this. We have those on our web our uh, website. Uh, you need a 13 by 16 five gram Dr. Pulley slider. They're 38 bucks. That'll give you a pretty big difference on the takeoff um, and carrying you up the, the hills. Uh, just click on our website. We got all kinds of upgrades on there, but the, and we also, we also have that, uh, our CVT transmission kit as well. That makes a big difference. So there's like three things that I would recommend that you do. Of course, everybody's on a budget, um, but plug and play CDI coil combo, uh, CVT transmission kit, and then uh, we, we also have that uh, um, fuel injection kit coming soon. You can also do a 20 millimeter carburetor. Hopefully um, that answered that. Somebody has a Pugo Kisby 4T50cc scooter. How can a little more... That's like European scooter. Uh, we don't have the, we don't have those scooters here, but I'll try to help you the best that we can. Um, just wants a little bit more speed when starting out at intersections without changing too much because the scooter is still under warranty. Okay, so on that guy, um, to, how do you increase the a little bit of speed on a stock 50 cc scooter? And uh, the short answer is back to that uh, those rollers. I don't know what that scooter has in it, but. You need to figure out what the stock weight roller, variator roller size is. And you wanna go, say it's a six gram, you wanna go a five gram. Just go like, to, to be safe, go one gram less and do that in a Dr. Pulley slider. You're gonna have to find out the dimensions and the weight stock, and then you can go from there. You can give us an email, I can try to help you with that. Do you know anything about a JJ Power Sport part? Do you know anything about JJ Power Sports? JJ Power Sport. Never heard of them. No, I, I don't know anything about JJ Power Sports. I'll look them up real quick. Um, is it a myth or is it true that there's no rev limiter on bikes over 49 cc? Uh, that's a myth. There is a rev limiter on bikes over. Pretty much all bikes are going to have a um, a rev limiter. Uh, just because it's huh? Or he was a question that he, we were oh, over 49. Gotcha. Um, but if you want to get rid of the uh, rev limiter, then we can. We have these, the Naraku CDI box, which is nice. Um, yeah, we have those, and it gets rid of the rev limiter and raises the uh, advances the timing. 
they say they they uh, promote them as they get rid of the rev limiter, but um, even with the uh, NBY, I tried to blow the motor up, and I couldn't. It's uh, I, I think there is a rev limiter. It's just really high, but they're promoted as having a rev limiter. Does anybody, if I get rid of this wheel, does anybody want that? Does anybody want to buy that wheel and tire for a wide tire ruckus? It's a 10 inch, 140 tire, 140, 90, 10. I think I'm gonna do a, a 12, 12 inch with white walls. So if anybody wants that, that's yours. Did you ever look about JJ Power Sports? Oh yeah, JJ Power Sports, let me look. I had it pulled up. Is there a CDI box with stock spark curve but no rev limit? Um, most of them have the timing advanced on them, but we do have one on our website. You can look it up. It's an adjustable um, performance CDI box for the QMB139 or the GY6, and you could turn that off, but it has the options of advancing. That's the T170, and what CDI box does he have? The OKO. Oh, CDI box? Yeah. From us. Yeah, which one? I'm, oh, I'm not sure. Probably the Naraku, right? So do you have that plug and play? Tell me which CDI box you have for your, we have a few different ones, but. Um, not sure, he's not sure which one. What's the safe? Uh, you just gotta use your best judgment. I've ne Honestly, I've never seen anybody blow their motor up from revving it too high um, on a scooter. I've seen it on motorcycles. Um, just use your best judgment. Don't let it get too high. Um, that Tita 171, I don't know what the, the RPM range is, I would say. 9,000 maybe? I don't know. Uh, it's an adjustable one. It's an adjustable one? Yeah, you just have to use your best judgment on that. I don't, I couldn't tell you. I haven't actually blown one up, so I don't know like what's safe and what's not safe. Um, what is the fastest and the bigger GY6 engine that I can install on a Chinese BWS scooter? What's the fastest? Yeah. What's the fastest and the biggest GY6 engine? The, the fastest and biggest GY6 engine that you can buy, I think now Tita makes like a 268cc water-cooled four valve. I have a 232cc, but you're talking about like over $3,000 for that motor. That's a GY6B motor. Um, what I would recommend, if you don't want to spend that kind of money, you can do like, like a GY6A with a stroker crank and a... 170 cc bore i think that's a 63 and a half bore and that'll bring you up to 190 cc that makes a pretty big difference for that pujo the kids is it red bike that you recommended um doing? for the pipe um for the little bit more speed what's the name again of the place in japan with the pipes? oh yeah so the name of the the place in japan with the pipes is a uh, web bike web bike japan you could just google it They have a lot of crazy stuff on there. Will a 130 by 90 by 10 fit a 2017 Zuma 50? 130, 90, 10. Uh, what comes on a stock? So th these are, oh, it's a 2010. So it's gonna be, it's really close to these. This is a, oh. Yeah, it probably will. I don't know that for sure. Um, I would say 90% sure that that will fit. Um, but look, look at your stock sizing. You could go a little wider for sure. I don't know what stock sizing is on that. I can look it up or email you later if you email me. Jake said he's never gone above 7,000 on the RPM with that adjustable. Uh, he's never gone above 7,000. Honestly, it's probably good for 9,000, but you're probably doing the right thing. I wouldn't risk it. 7,000 RPM is good. You're probably flying at that point. That adjustable. What brand of scooter is best to buy for a Healy likes West Virginia? What brand? What was the question? What brand of scooter is best to buy for a Healy likes West Virginia? Hilly. Hilly. What brand scooter is best to buy for a Hilly area like West Virginia? I think that's the question. You can do, uh, 
I would do a two-stroke scooter. I'd recommend the older Zumas, the two-stroke Zumas. Any of the two-stroke Zumas is what I'd recommend. If you can find a Kimco People, 50cc, two-stroke, I recommend that one. Also, Buddy, 50cc, two-stroke, or Eton Beamer, 50cc. Those, uh, those two-strokes do better on hills, and they're, they're more peppy. Two-strokes overall are going to have a lot more power. They have about twice the power of a four-stroke. They're just, they just aren't as, uh, they don't last as long because they wear out quicker. But they're cheap to fix, easy to fix. Any recommendation on where to get a muffler for Lance Cabo scooter or headers? Lance Cabo. We probably have them on our website. Let me pull that up, Lance Cabo. What does that look like? What size? Did it say what size? No. What size Lance Cabo do you have? 150 or a 50? Here it is. Oh, yeah. We have these on our website. Yeah, we, we have those on our website. You can do, we can do the, uh, oh, the Lance Cabo. This is a 200cc. Oh, never mind. Good question. I don't know. If it's a 150 or a 50, we can help you. So it basically, GY6. Yeah, we have those on our website. Just type in GY6 Sport Exhaust on our website. It'll come up. That's the one that I recommend. It's made in Taiwan. Super good quality. Um, stay away from like the cheap exhausts. They, they rust really easy and break and fall apart. Would you ever consider to put a two-stroke Minarelli motor on a slam bracket? Um, for me, it's, uh, that would, I mean, for the right person, that's sweet. For me, that kind of was like putting a street bike motor in a Harley. It's like, this doesn't seem right. It's weird. But don't get me wrong. I love two strokes, but and I love ruckuses. But the two combined for me is, I just don't like that style. Not to say you shouldn't do it. If you think it, it's good, then do it. That It's going to fly, I'll tell you that. Uh, two stroke motor, you can make those fly. Like, I would say you can probably beat a 232cc ruckus. That leads us to our next question. What is your 232 top speed and what do you have on it? 100 miles an hour. My 232cc does 100 miles an hour. I got it up to 80 and I didn't go any faster, but I it had plenty more. And what does it have done to it? It's got the cylinder, the head, fuel injection system, uh, pipe. It's got 35% uh, um, larger gears. It's got a CVT transmission kit. It's got everything you can think of on it. The only thing I have left is a turbo. Try that sucker out. And I didn't do a four valve head or water cooled. The four valve head's good or for, better for higher RPMs, but I didn't do that because I wanted more torque. I also did 16 gram sliders, huge sliders. That sucker flies. But right now I just, uh, on the 232, I pulled the carburetor out, did fuel injection. The, the fuel injection system that I have was made for a 250cc, so it's kind of fat on the, on the higher RPMs, and I'm having a company build me a tuner. It's taken forever. So it doesn't run the way it used to with the carburetor um, because it's not tuned properly. It still runs. I can cruise it around, but um, if I'm hammered at high RPMs, it's, it's not all there. Yeah. Um, his bike did eight. This goes back to Ghetto Dexter. I forget what he had. Yeah, is that one seven one eighty? My bike did eighty two miles per hour before this current issue in the garage. Now, can it possibly be the valve float? Thinking of new valves. It could. It could be the your eighty two miles an hour. Yeah, that's pretty good. See, mine goes like eighty. But remember, I'm, I lose like 20%. I lose 20% of the power up here in the, my 232. Um, so the uh, the valves could be floating. You might need s uh, stiffer springs if your RPMs are too high. When he says that his valves is, are floating, that means that the 
the valves are going up, up and down so fast that the spring doesn't have time to push the valve out. So the valve keepers can fall out and it could be terrible. They're probably not floating, but they could be. Are the are questions dying down? Um, do we have valve sets? Valve? New subject. We have valve sets. Valve sets? Um, we have... No, we don't. Well, I can get you them. I don't particularly... I don't think I've ever sold valves to somebody, but I can... Uh, I could do that. I could try to find some for you. I can get Tita valves too. If That's you want. what Chris, Chris said. Tita yeah. is the only place you can find springs for that. Yeah, I can get you. I'm a dealer with Tita as well. They're in Taiwan. It takes a bit to get, but I can get them. Well, you guys, I think we're probably going to wrap it up. I just wanted to go live, try to keep it kind of more consistent. Um, if I'm not putting out videos, I should go live at least. So, um, We'll do, we'll do one more question and then uh, we'll, we gotta we gotta leave. Um, what are a couple of reasons a seventy cc two stroke would be would sputter and cut out? A couple reason uh, why a seventy cc two stroke would sputter and cut out. One thing that I always see on those two strokes is the spark plug wire is barely on there. It just rattles around. Check the spark plug wire. Make sure it's not worn out when you push it on to the spark plug. The, the cap onto the spark plug, you should hear a zippy noise, like a zip tie. If that's not happening, happening then you, you probably need that cap replaced. That's a common deal. The other thing is, is you probably, if you, when you did the 70 CC kit, you wanted to uh, uh, do a, uh, a rejet. You need to go larger on, uh, on the jets. Make sure you're doing that. I would say uh, go up like three jet sizes um, whenever you do the, um, the 70cc kit. If you don't do that, then you might end up uh, leak. If you don't get enough fuel, it's gonna, it's gonna, it may blow up that two-stroke motor. So make sure that's right. The other thing that a lot of people don't do uh, when they do the 70cc kit on their two-stroke is add about a, an ounce of oil to the uh, uh, the fuel. Because remember, you have a 50cc oil pump, and if you're not adding more oil then you're not getting uh, enough oil in your system. Hopefully that, that helps out. Fishstick says that he's sending us a super chat. I don't really know what that Fish is. Fishstick, you're, you're sending us a super chat. Two dollars, eh? two dollars, yeah! Sorry. Thanks, Fishstick. I, I appreciate it, thank you. <laughs> Heck yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, for, for those of you guys that, that want to help the channel out, you can, of course, do that. And I appreciate that, Fish Stick. I think that's the second time you've done that, and I really appreciate that. Um, you can go to our Patreon account. We have a Patreon. You get rewards, and, you, and you're helping the channel out. Uh, you can check it out. The link's down below in the description, and uh, that'll help us out. And we really appreciate everything, guys. And uh, we'll keep putting out videos for you and cool products. Um, Seems like all I need is time, and I can do some really cool stuff. But uh, till next time, we appreciate it. See you. See you guys later. We'll see ya. <laughs>